international average for entry level jobs at data science is around 8 to 10 lakhs per annum for bang mang or major product based mnc's this particular entry level can go a lot higher mm-hmm. something like a 15 to 18 lakhs per annum plus stocks and perks which makes it in the range of 25 to 40 the more senior you get i think you can even go up to let's say 50 to 80 lakhs per annum which includes the stocks Hi everyone, welcome back to Boss Guru Academy's YouTube channel. Today on our podcast, we have invited another great personality. We have Tejan Sahu with us, who is a data scientist in Microsoft, and he has written a book Beyond Code, which is a bestseller on Amazon in data scientist field. So he will be telling us how to get into top product based companies, to become a data scientist, and what is the roadmap that you should follow. So watch this video till the end because we have shared a lot of insights in the middle as well. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and. Subscribe. subscribe to our channel if you like the content like and you can share this video with your friends as well so without any further ado let's get started with the video hey everyone uh, welcome back to our podcast and tezen has finally joined us on this podcast thank you so much for joining tezen and why don't we start with a brief introduction about yourself sure thank you so much noor so i am tezen i work as an applied scientist to at Microsoft with the Bing Auto Suggest team. So I think it's fair to say that uh, I try to crunch raw data and derive insights, actionable insights out of it, and use them in our products to delight the users. Uh, I've been at Microsoft for a little over two years, and since I've graduated from IIT Bombay with a major in mechanical and a minor in computer science. Apart from my work at Microsoft, I am an AI enthusiast and pretty active on LinkedIn, uh, sharing my insights and learnings around the area of AI and a bunch of new innovations that are coming up in this. space um i'm also uh, a data science and ai mentor and i do help aspiring data scientists and software devs to basically kick start their career in data science in tech typically then uh, drive really impactful projects and also thrive in this dynamic industry that's great that's awesome and um i have heard that you are also best selling author on your book uh, data science beyond code on amazon so i would love to know a little bit more about it thank you so much for that so this book uh, beyond code was uh, published last year this is my first book and i'm happy to say that it hit the amazon be- uh, number one bestseller across multiple categories uh, in india so the book typically talks about multiple strategies to balance your technical and soft skills for having a very impactful career in a dynamic industry like uh, data science mm-hmm. because uh, in this industry i think differentiating yourself uh, takes much more than just learning to code and, and uh, learning to just analyze data because uh, Over the, I think in the book, over the course of ten chapters, I've tried to share a bunch of my experiences and actionable strategies which people can use for a very holistic sort of a growth in uh, this professional sphere. Mm-hmm. We've talked about stuff like uh, T-shaped learning curves, then um, data-driven approaches, how to have creativity in uh, data science. That's a pretty interesting aspect. Then. going on to a little more non technical stuff like um, conflict management negotiations and also capping it off with uh, brand building and growing as an adaptive leader right so i think the intent was pretty much to along with the what's tell people about the how and the why about getting into and honing your soft skills as well you know really encourage folks to read the book and share their thoughts about it as well definitely yeah uh, i am sure that it will be very helpful for anyone uh, who is aspiring to be good in the data science field right and i was interested to know what exactly is the work here that you do at microsoft okay so uh, as i mentioned earlier i work as an applied scientist with the bing auto suggest team so what is bing auto suggest so if you log on to the bing uh, search engine and start typing into your search box there's this pane that opens up with containing suggestions based on whatever prefix that you have typed right. so all these suggestions are something which our team powers and it's not only this particular canvas on bing.com but in fact you talk about most of the search boxes in the microsoft ecosystem you talk mm-hmm. about the edge browser you talk about the windows search box uh, these are multiple uh, entry points that whose suggestions are powered by our team so uh, the objective of auto suggest is typically to help users reduce their effort in terms of keystrokes to reach their search intent now our team typically involves maintaining and improving the existing features on this as well as coming up with new delightful features which can wow the users yeah. so on a personal level i have been involved in working on several aspects of the quality and relevance of suggestions starting from the number of suggestions that we show to reducing gibberish and defective suggestions adding diversity to the suggestions that we show and making the suggestions in a way more relevant 
probably through personalization or several other ways as well. Uh, in fact, one of the most recent uh, projects that I was working on in this team was related to making auto-suggest a gateway into Bing Chat, which is the recently launched chat vertical of uh, Bing. So yeah, there's pretty, pretty interesting uh, stuff around brainstorming and just, just the feel that you are dealing with terabytes of data at scale. I think that, that, that keeps me energized and yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very uh, cool thing that you are doing right now, like improving or to suggest right now. So, and what, what does a typical day look like uh, for you in your role? and the challenges that you face while working on improving being auto suggest cool so if you talk about my day i usually wake up around 6 7 ish and start off my day by reading a book and uh, perhaps writing some content for linkedin maybe have a workout session if i get some time at home uh, start my office usually around 9 o'clock i prefer going to office whenever i am in hyderabad otherwise when if i'm working from home then if i'm back in my hometown then i'll work from home Mm -hmm. But yeah, I prefer going to office. Primarily, the day is focused on having reasonably long, deep work sessions. These sessions would typically last for like around 30 minutes to one hour or one and a half hours, which would involve ideation, data analysis. You talk about feature development or also reading research papers, blogs, trying to find out new ideas, building proof of concepts. So all this is uh, comprises of the sections for deep work. And we do have a lot of meetings as well interspersed throughout the day. So these are, these could be scrums, these could be deep dives, design discussions. And also uh, we do have a lot of learning opportunities that are learning opportunities and learning sessions which are conducted by Microsoft employees. So all these things happen and then try to end my day around 5.36ish. But yeah, sometimes the nature of the work makes it extend to a little more than that. So that's how my work day looks like back Late in the evening, I like to pursue my other interests, like diving into the recencies of AI, perhaps mentoring folks who have reached out to me. And yeah, I think uh, relaxing and all these watching series and a bunch of those yeah, you know, yeah. that, 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 that go up. Right? Definitely, definitely. What are the know-hows and skills uh, that you think are essential for anyone aspiring to uh, become a data scientist? especially in a top role based company like Microsoft. So when you look at the hard skills that are the tech know-hows for a person who wants to aspire to mm -hmm. becoming a data scientist, I think you first need to have a very strong foundation of uh, fundamentals in data science. Talk about math, probability, statistics, talk about data mining, data processing, the technicalities around that. You need to have a very strong analytical background as well. Uh, you need to develop your analytical skills, problem solving skills. Then I think you need to have a decent amount of experience with tools. There's a lot of data science tools available out there mm -hmm. for analysis, visualization. Uh, you talk about libraries in Python, you talk about specific tools. I think uh, knowledge of that is really good to have. And definitely knowledge of is a must because I mean, the language, it, it's kind of language agnostic because once you know one language well enough i think you can adapt well to the other thing right so but yeah i think for a data science role typically i would advise on learning python then definitely i think you need to be up to date with the current trends in your industry that's happening and any experience with llms in today's date large language models or in general stuff like model optimization ml ops system design, distributed systems. And these are all added bonuses. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think with all that being said, I think one of the major key aspects, which is very relevant today is how often or how well I well versed are you in dealing with AI and uh, leveraging AI co-pilots in your day-to-day -day work to enhance your productivity. That, mm -hmm. that, that has become very crucial over the last one, one and a half years. Can you walk us through your interview process at Microsoft? Like uh, what are the typical questions that are being asked in data science interviews? Reviews. Okay, so my story is slightly different over here because I joined Microsoft as a summer intern back in 2020 and then happened to convert my internship into a full-time offer. Okay. So I can definitely share about uh, the inter internship interview experience that I had. So as I recollect, we had, uh, I, I think I had two rounds. The first one was predominantly based on a resume deep dive, which was followed by uh, machine learning and deep learning related questions based on the projects that I had mentioned in my resume. Then we had a couple of data science, uh, basic fundamental data science questions, as well as a couple of DSA related questions. Again, those were very, very relevant to the projects that I had mentioned in my resume. So yeah, I think can can be considered to be a part of the deep dive itself. It and the, the interview ended with uh, a couple of questions on hardcore probability, which was around Bayes theorem and a bunch of other things. 
Mm-hmm. That was the first round. The second round was more about machine learning concepts. Uh, I had questions around the bias variance trade-offs, different metrics to evaluate, models. Uh, and that round also had a DSA question wherein I had to code on paper. On The, the question was relatively simple, but the fact that you had to code on paper without any IDE support was uh, the trick over there. Yeah, And uh, I think the major question in that particular round was to design an ML system, which was basically a recommender system for a video platform like YouTube. So okay. that was the question that I had. Mm-hmm. And once the internship was done and interview for the pre-placement offer was uh, uh, more like a healthy discussion between me and my M2 that time. Okay. So I think it was about uh, the learnings of the project and certain mm-hmm. decisions as to why you did uh, th- th- this particular thing this way in this in while implementing the project and possibly discussing more opportunities on how to improve upon the pro- the thing that we worked on. Right. And how can someone like who wants to become data scientist, let's say in Microsoft, how can they prepare for the interview and uh, increase the chances of getting selected? Like what's the preparation strategy should uh, they follow to crack such companies? Got it. So... I think there has to be a def- definitely a very disciplined form of preparation that you need for cracking interviews, especially in this new world of data science. It's a relatively new space compared to software dev or any other thing. Yeah. So data science is relatively new. So definitely, as I mentioned, brushing up on the fundamentals of math and ML is definitely recommended. DSA, although it's said that ML-related interviews should not have DSA typically, but as a matter of fact, you do have DSA questions just to know that you are good with your coding skills as well. So basic DSA is also critical. Then I think when you are trying to apply for any particular role, you look at the job description and tailor your resume accordingly. Mm-hmm. Because it's a it'll be a foolish idea to send the same master resume sort of a thing to any role that you are applying to. So you need to tailor, tailor your uh, resume a little according to that and Today, AI can help you with that a lot as well. Secondly, I think while in the interview, while showcasing your projects, it's very important that you build a very in-depth understanding of the topic that you're talking about, the various techniques that you have used Mm -hmm. to an extent that you know the math behind the algorithm as well. Because many a times interviewers will ask you the math behind the algorithm or just take you into deep tech dive. But that's there. And also having a slightly broadened knowledge around that particular area also helps a lot. That's Mm -hmm. like the T-shaped skill set that I was mentioning earlier. That's the kind of thing that you want to portray. You you go deep as well as go slightly broad as well. Yeah, you should be a master of uh, like uh, one skill and then jack of all trades sort of definitely okay got it, got it. and I mean, apart from let's say hard skills or technical skills right i think soft skills are very important as well right for right. Uh, and they are overlooked by many people uh, while they're preparing so how do you think soft skills play an important role to differentiate yourself basically in the interviews i think let, let, let's just start with an example like I am pretty sure you and perhaps our viewers might also resonate with this fact that we come across people who are really good at developing complex models and writing really, really elegant code, but they might struggle in articulating their findings to impactful stakeholders Mm -hmm. and perhaps struggle working in a collaborative environment. Now, that's like uh, a totally missed opportunity. And that's predominantly because you miss out on honing your so-called soft skills because of extreme focus on the the technical or the hard skills that we talk about. For Mm -hmm. example, let's say, I think the example of communication, whether it's written or oral, I think that that's very effective for collaboration. Another aspect I'd like to talk about is data storytelling. Now, it can be clearly said that data without actionable insights can be compared to a compass without a needle because you, you know that there is some direction but you don't know the actual direction in which you want to drive the product in. So articulating your data and findings in the form of of a compelling story can help you convince stakeholders and convey your impact really well. So that's, those are a couple of uh, really important soft skills, which I would say. And the reason why I suggest investing in these soft skills is because they not only elevate your personal brand, but I think they help you rise and shine in the industry by, you talk about promotions, you talk about more ownership, you talk about uh, more opportunities. I think all of this comes in when you start honing those skills. I, I think I've talked a lot about a lot more detail about this in my book and I do highly recommend the viewers to check that out and feel the difference for themselves when they start implementing those strategies. Definitely I think yeah soft skills open a lot of new doors for people and uh, I hope that people do read your book and uh, get the gist of what they might be missing out you know and yeah let's say once someone has cracked the interview right and coming to the salary part now uh, what what is the salary band they can expect in these roles. Okay, so 
I can talk about India typically. So in India, your typical data science uh, role salaries vary a lot based on the company that you are entering as well as the experience that you have. Mm-hmm. So I was reading up some stats and uh, the, typically the national average is around uh, for national average for entry level jobs at data science is around eight to 10 lakhs per annum. Okay. And for uh, FANG, MANG or major product based MNCs, this particular entry level can go a lot higher. Something mm-hmm. like 15 to 18 lakhs per annum plus stocks and perks, which makes it in the range of 25 to 40. And the more senior you get, I think you can even go up to, let's say, 50 to 80 lakhs per annum, which includes the stocks. That's as far as the MNC structure is concerned. For Mm -hmm. startups, the average is usually lesser than the national average. But I do know that there are certain startups which are typically offer remote work and offer a lot higher pay to Mm -hmm. data scientists. But this was about the uh, product-based company. Typically, the product-based companies. Now, you also have data science roles in high-frequency trading companies, which are HFTs. And there, I think the salary structure is a lot more compared to the to the averages. And the average earnings are a much, much more. And uh, maybe also comparable or even greater than some of the product-based MNCs. Okay. okay. So, their uh, like pay structure is a lot more uh, like than in, like closer to international average rather than our national average, you would say? I would say. Say that I, mean, I think it's it's a little what do you say it's it, it's a little complex over there because and the reason there's a there's a concrete reason to it because they are involved in making money. <laughs> you talk about high frequency trading. You are making if you are designing a, a mathematical model to that makes money by any form. I think you are entitled to get and again the work pressure over there is uh, the it's work important. pressure and the culture is very different from product based companies. So yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's all balances out over there. <laughs> And uh, let's say if someone is already a working professional, right? They are working in a company and now they want to switch to data science field, right? And what, what are the steps uh, do you think they should follow? Okay, so uh, we're talking about the tech industry. So that typically involves a lot of different roles you talk about. You have product managers, you have devs, you have QA people, tech associates, consultants. So each of them brings a different skill set. So the exact roadmap is slightly different, but I think more or less the framework is similar. Firstly, as I mentioned, uh, you need to find a very strong why for your transition and once you find that why it could be maybe your job satisfaction it could be salary hike or a newfound passion in data science whatever it is be very clear about it because that's a major question that might be asked in your interviews why are you changing your roles what is the reason behind it right once you have that why figured out I think then you can move to the how and that will involve covering stuff like uh, your basic probability stats, Python, Mm -hmm. SQL, visualization tools, things that typically data scientists would use. You have ample number of online courses and platforms out there to learn about it. And also fundamentals of uh, fundamentals of ML deep learning algorithms is very important to brush up on. Uh, If you're coming from the dev background, one advantage that you have is you have, uh, you might be having a very strong system design kind of a background. So that if you leverage that knowledge in trying to learn and link it with machine learning systems or distributed machine learning systems, it will give you a very, very good uh, uh, edge over others. That helps a lot. And then building a very strong portfolio of uh, practical projects that you have worked on, whether it's data science, uh, whether it's basically data exploration, or perhaps uh, uh, working on open source projects or maybe implementing stuff that has been mentioned in certain certain research papers. So all these things can build up your portfolio really well. And yeah, as I mentioned, completing uh, certain courses or uh, certifications in deeper uh, topics like say reinforcement learning or uh, working with large language models. So these, right. these, these kind of things help you build that expertise. And yeah, I think with that, always expect to have, I think that being the tech side of things, expect certain behavioral questions as well and definitely start tailoring your resume and uh, prepare for the interview well. Definitely, yeah. I think, uh, and all the best to everyone who are looking to get into data science roles. Um, you can definitely check out uh, Tizen's uh, book as well, right? Uh, for getting the right idea about how to prepare and how to uh, like develop skills. And yeah, I think very good advices uh, he's been giving in this podcast so far. So make, to make it a little bit more fun right now, uh, we are going to start with the rapid fire round. Right? Okay. Isn't? So you'll have to answer every question in 10 seconds or less. Uh, okay, some I'll try. questions are there. So okay. whenever you're ready, let me know. <laughs> Perfect. It's ready. So what's one mobile app you cannot live without? I would like to think of it as WhatsApp. 
and Notion. I think it's a very tough competition between these two. Okay, uh, Notion. WhatsApp for communication and Notion for jotting down ideas and thoughts that I have at random times of the day and organizing them very well. I think take yes, some time yeah. out on the day to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And would you rather wake up early or work till late? I hands down wake up early. I think even I said. In fact. Uh, while writing my book i think i uh, there were there were times wherein i woke up at 4 am in the morning to complete a chapter so yeah definitely waking up early creativity is at top <laughs> yeah for me at least yeah and if you're not a data scientist what would you be huh. perhaps a singer oh that's great that's great in fact i do have a youtube channel as well wherein i upload song covers regularly for a bunch of my favorite melodies so yeah guys YouTube. now uh, you know what we are going to do <laughs> we are going to <laughs> and in the description you can definitely check it out definitely thank <laughs> you so much <laughs> uh, what's uh, on your bucket list right now on my bucket list right now i think it's been there for a long time i think perhaps a trip to europe that's oh awesome. that's great <laughs> long time coming yeah yep. uh which keyboard shortcut do you use the most ah alt tab alt tab oh, switch a lot of alt tab for switching yeah a lot of switching <laughs> requires across monitors yeah alt tab and uh which one would you choose android ios or windows i haven't used an ios till now so android i would go with. windows phone windows phone since we are comparing on phones windows phones is I think discontinued. So oh, Android, yeah, yeah, yeah. Android, it is for you. Got it. And what's the message for aspiring data scientist in just um, three words? Three words. Mm. Okay. Uh, explore, analyze, and innovate. Explore, analyze, and innovate, guys. Remember, remember the golden words. Thank you so much, uh, Dejan, uh, for joining with us today. It was a very good podcast. I enjoyed it a lot, and it's very much helpful, I think, for people who are looking to get into data science roles. We will uh, include the link to his LinkedIn as well. Uh, you can connect with him there. And Dejan, as he told, he helps out people as well who are looking to get into this field. So thank you so much, Dejan, for joining with us today. Thank you so much, Noor, for having me. And yeah. Shout out to everyone over here for making this possible, and please do follow the YouTube channel of Boss Coder and reach out to me on LinkedIn for any professional help in the data science or software dev fields if you have. Thank you, thank you so much, Tejan. Amazing time with you. See you today. See you. Another lovely conversation. Bye bye.